The best gifts are not material, but spiritual, not temporal, but eternal, and not earthly, but heavenly. In the book of Ephesians, we discover a rich list of what God has given to His children. Let's join Scott Pauley now as we open this portion of Scripture and take inventory of all spiritual blessings that are ours in Christ. Those of you who listen regularly know that I very frequently reference a man by the name of Frank Sells. Dr. Sells is in glory now, but he was quite a Bible teacher. I can see him now. I can hear him now. His words echo in my ears. And uh, I remember Dr. Sells would teach through large portions of Scripture, very often books of the Bible, and he always began this way. He would talk about his general impressions. I still remember him saying about certain portions of Scripture, my first general impression of this book is this. My second general impression is this. I look back now and realize that the man had lived so much in that book that what he was giving were introductory truths, overarching themes. It's a wonderful way to approach a book of the Bible because before you get down into the details, you ought to to do a flyover perhaps what we might call a bird's eye view, Uh, get the lay of the land, so to speak. We're in the book of Ephesians. Uh, We've established that we're going to be talking about all the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. Let me read our verse again, Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So there's the phrase, all spiritual blessings blessings. And then as the book unfolds all the way through chapter 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6, it's my conviction that God is unveiling those spiritual blessings, Uh, that God is rolling out heaven's red carpet, if you will. He's saying, look, here are the resources that you have. You, You have everything that you need in the person of Jesus Christ. So before we start walking through it and identifying this list of all the spiritual blessings, let me give you some general impressions today. May I do that? Three observations about the book of Ephesians and what a book it is. And I want you to see how these great themes from the book of Ephesians connect to our study on all spiritual blessings. The first is this, that the book of Ephesians is a book of fullness. It's a book about the fullness of God and we're living in a very, very empty world. In fact, we are living in a world right now full of people whose hearts are empty and homes are empty. Oh, they're full of stuff, full of money, full of ideas, full of knowledge. Solomon, Solomon is proof that you can have full hands and an empty heart. You can even have a full head, full of understanding and knowledge about things and have an empty heart. Isn't this an empty world? All is vanity and vexation of spirit. But when you come to the book of Ephesians, it's not emptiness you find. It's fullness. And it's not just any fullness. It's the fullness of God. In fact, did you know in the book of Ephesians, you have the fullness of God, the fullness of Christ, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit? I love this. It's like you you get all of the Godhead when you come to know the Lord is your Savior. Here's an example. Ephesians chapter number 1, speaking of Christ and his exaltation to the right hand of the heavenly Father in heavenly places. It says in verse 21 of Ephesians 1, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So you have the fullness of Jesus the fullness of Christ, the the fullness of the Son. You get all of Christ. Then when you come to Ephesians chapter 3, it says in verse 19, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. So watch this. When you get all of Jesus, you also get all of his Father. Because his father becomes your father. So now we not only have the fullness of the son, we have the fullness of God our father. And then when you come to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18, we read, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So we have the fullness of Christ, the fullness of God our Father, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. 
Friend, I want to tell you today on the authority of the Word of God, God doesn't want you to live empty. God wants you to live full. In fact, He wants you to live the overflowing, abundant Christian life. And I want to submit to you that's connected to you recognizing all the spiritual blessings you have in Christ. You see, it's His spiritual blessings uh, that give us that fullness. We're full of the spiritual blessings of Christ. We're full of the spiritual blessings of the Father. We're full of the spiritual blessings of the Holy Spirit. And so the book of fullness teaches us about the spiritual blessings. The second observation I would give you about this book is that not only is Ephesians a book of fullness, it is also the book with the classic passage on the home. Now that's very interesting to me. Ephesians chapter number 5 And then the opening verses of Ephesians chapter 6 outlines for us the role of the husband, the role of the wife, the role of parents, the role of children. I mean, it gives us the most beautiful portrait of what a Christian family is supposed to look like. And oh, do you see the connection with all the spiritual blessings? Far too many people live their life and raise their family and build their homes with the idea that they can just get a little more money or a few more things or new toys They'll be happy. Well, those things may be material blessings, but they're not the greatest blessings. No, friend, the greatest blessings are all the spiritual blessings. So do you see how God connects heaven and home, how he connects the spiritual blessings with the daily life of a husband and a wife and father and mother and children? This is what your family needs. You need the spiritual blessings, and your family needs to recognize those spiritual blessings. And then the third observation about the book of Ephesians, not only is it the book of fullness and the book on the family, but it is also the book that gives us the classic passage on spiritual warfare, on the spiritual conflict. You know Ephesians chapter 6, the the Christian soldier standing in the midst of the evil day in the whole armor of God. Well, watch this. God gives us these spiritual blessings in the midst of the battle, not after the battle is over, not when the war is over, not someday in heaven, but right now in the middle of your conflict, in the middle of the spiritual war that you're engaged in, God says, I'm going to give you everything you need. Uh, In the words of another New Testament writer, all things that pertain to life and godliness. I want to tell you, if you want to live a full life, if you want your family to learn real contentment and joy, And if you want to be victorious in the middle of this spiritual conflict, here's what you need. You need to begin to recognize all of the spiritual blessings that you have in Christ Jesus. And you can't buy them. Sorry, you you can't buy them. But you can recognize them and rehearse them. You can talk about them and you can thank God for them. You can meditate on them and you can apply them. Yes, they're yours in Christ Jesus. They're absolutely free to you because they've been bought and paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I marvel. I marvel at myself that so many days I've lived like a pauper. I've lived more like the prodigal in the hog pen than like the son seated at the father's table. When our father has bread enough and to spare, we perish with hunger. What's wrong with us? Living like we are under it instead of seated with him in heavenly places. Oh, dear brother, dear sister in Christ, I hope you'll enter in uh, to a greater understanding of all the spiritual blessings you have in Christ Jesus. And if you're not a believer, I want to challenge you today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Come into the family of God and you will find in Christ everything you need, all spiritual blessings. Isn't it amazing what God has made available for His people? Our sincere prayer is that you will discover all that God has for you and be led to true thanksgiving, worship, and praise. Join us again next time as we continue our study of the Word of God. Until then, thank you for listening. We would love to hear how God is at work in your heart and home. Visit us today at enjoyingthejourney.org.